Hi guys, today we are going to work on word problems with mass and liquid volume. We've been talking about liquid volume and mass earlier this week. To review those terms, mass is the amount of matter in an object, and liquid volume is the amount of space that a liquid takes up. The units that we use for mass are grams and kilograms, and the units we use for liquid volume are milliliters and liters. Um, if you recall, we said that a paper clip has about a gram of mass. So a paper clip is about, is, it's equivalent to about one gram. And we said that one of those hardcover dictionaries in our classroom is equivalent to a kilogram. That's approximately a kilogram. Thinking about milliliters, um, one milliliter is about 20 droplets of water. And then I showed you guys this kitchen spoon with a little bit of tea in it. That's also about a milliliter. And then if you think about a teaspoon over, almost overflowing, like a teaspoon full of liquid, that's about five milliliters. So that gives you a good idea of how much liquid a milliliter is. And then if we think about a liter, how much is a liquid, um, how much is a liter of liquid? What kind of volume does that look like? Um, we looked at these different bottles of soda. This bottle of ginger ale, that's one liter of soda. This bottle of Coke is two liters of soda. And this bottle of Pepsi is three liters of soda. So let's look at some word problems then with mass and liquid volume. Okay, so this first problem says the scale shows the mass of one of Freddy's pumpkins. If he has seven pumpkins with the same mass, what is the total mass of all seven pumpkins? So let's look at the scale and um, let's read the problem again. The scale shows the mass of one of Freddy's pumpkins. So let's look at the scale. One pumpkin is measured here on this scale, the mass of one pumpkin. So our scale is in kilograms and it looks like one, two, three, four, his pumpkin, the mass of this pumpkin is four kilograms. So I'm gonna write here, if I can get my pen to work, one pumpkin equals four kilograms. It's about even four. All right, one pumpkin is four kilograms. If he has seven pumpkins with the same mass, what is the total mass of all seven pumpkins? So one is four, but he's got seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And each one is four kilograms. So what equation would that be? He's got seven pumpkins and they're all four kilograms. So seven times four equals N. Hopefully you know your multiplication and you know that seven times four is 28. So N equals 28, which means that the total mass of all of his seven pumpkins is 28 kilograms. All right, let's try another one. All right, this one says, for a science experiment, David needs the amount of water shown in the graduated cylinder to the left. If he wants to do the experiment twice, how much water will he need? So let's look at this. David needs the amount of water shown in the graduated cylinder. So here's the cylinder. So, well, how much water is actually shown here? So it looks like the, the main hash marks here are by fives, right? It goes by fives. So five, 10, 15. And then the little hash marks, if it's five up here is to 20. And then it looks like the little hash marks go by one. So 15, 16, 17, 18. So right here is 18. And what's my unit? My unit is up here on my cylinder. So he has in the cylinder 18 milliliters of water. But it says he wants to do, if he wants to do the experiment twice, how much water will he need? 
So that means the first time he wants to do the experiment, he needs 18 milliliters. And the second time he wants to do the experiment, he needs 18 milliliters. So I could do two equations here. I could say 18 plus 18 equals N. Or I could say 18 times 2 equals N. So I'm going to skip over here to this next blank paper or blank sheet of my um, board. And I'm going to say if I did the 18 plus 18, let's look what that would look like. 10 plus 8 if I'm doing expanded form. Right? All right, so 8 plus 8 is 16. 10 plus 10 is 20. And then I need to regroup because I can't have 16 in my ones place, so I need to take a 10 out of there, which would mean I'd have 6 left, and I need to put that 10 over into my tens place, which would give me 30 plus 6. So that would mean 36. If I was going to do the um, 18 times 2 equation, if I have 18 times 2, we don't have to remember our 18 fact table, right? But what can I do to this 18? I can break up that number, right? Remember distributive property. I can decompose 18. Remember mouth method. Mouth mouse method. Ooh, I'm getting tongue tied. Mouse method. So I'm going to put my ears down on the bottom because I don't have any space at the top. But if I broke up 18, what would make sense to break it up into? I could do, if I know my nines, I could do nine times nine, but I like to do 10 in a number. So I'm going to do 10 and eight. And then I set this up as distributive property, right? This would be two times 10. plus 2 times 8. So 2 times 10 is 20. 2 times 8 is 16. 20 plus 16 is 36. So back over here on this screen, when it says how much water um, does David need to do two of the experiment, experiments? He, need, he needs 36 milliliters. I'm having some pen difficulties. All right, 36 milliliters of water. Okay, so let's try one more. Um, Rosa made her coffee in the glass mug pictured. Then she shared with Kenny and poured 233 milliliters of coffee in Kenny's mug. How much coffee did Rosa have left? So I want you to do this one on your own. And so you're going to pause, do this one on your own, and come back and see how you did. All right, so the equation you should have come up with is 400 because that's the amount of coffee that was pictured here, 400 milliliters if it's full. 400 minus 233 equals N, because that's going to tell us how much she had left after she gave Kenny 233. And then when I subtract that out, I get 167 milliliters of coffee. All right. Have a good day. Bye.